Hey everybody, Stevie X here, and today it's part two of my Pan American Tech Tree speculation for World of Warships, where we talk about destroyers, and the proposal put forth in the community for a Pan American Destroyer Tech Tree, as well as my theories on what such a tech tree would look like. Now, before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to three particular people from the World of Warships forums who have been a major help in this endeavor, namely Bruno Scherzer, Mo Bryan, and Talleyrand. Talleyrand in particular, I can credit with being a big inspiration for this video series, as he is the man behind the original proposal for a Pan-American DD line on the forums, and I'll have a link to said proposal in the description if you want to check that out, because it's pretty cool. And thank you so much for your help with the information on this project, and I think I'll make a follow-up video regarding my original video on cruisers, battleships, and carriers, since they provide a treasure trove of information on that front as well after the fact. So, again, muchas gracias, mis amigos. Now, with the shoutouts out of the way and a little bit of Spanish thrown in as well because, well, it fits the topic, let's get on with this fun and engaging topic that we got today. See? I can make shitty overuse World of Warships puns too. Now, the way I'll go about this is to go through each tier from Tier 2 to Tier 10 and go over the ships in Talleyrand's original proposal, as well as discuss what I think about what of um, those ships, as well as possible alternatives. But before I do, I feel like I need to add a Tier 1 candidate to the mix. Since we're talking about a new nation tree, we have to have a Tier 1 to start the tech tree somewhere. And one of the cool side effects of my research on the history of the first Pan-American ship in the game, the Nueve de Julio, has led me to find a very interesting gunboat that would make a fine Tier 1 to start the line, while also introducing a new country to be represented in game, which, in my view, is always welcome. And it's not a country that I think a lot of you would ever expect. The ship I'm talking about would be the Humaita-class gunboat from Paraguay. Yep, Paraguay. These two Italian-built river gunboats named the Humaita and the Paraguay were built in the late 1920s and early 30s and performed most notably as troop transports during the Chaco War between Paraguay and Bolivia from 1932 to 1935 and they were later seized by rebel forces during the Paraguayan Civil War in 1947. Also in 1955, the Paraguay, the ship, not the country, though of course it does represent it, would be the ship that carried the exiled former president President of Argentina, Juan Perón, into exile after the Revolución Libertadora in Argentina, which in turn marked the only notable service in Argentina for the Nueve de Julio that we have in game. Ah, uh, the crossroads of history, you never cease to amaze me. Both ships still exist today, in fact, with the Humaita being preserved as a museum ship and the Paraguay being used as a storage vessel for the Navy. Looking at the ship itself, we have a very solid Tier 1 candidate on our hands here. Main armament will be two dual turrets of 119mm guns. Secondaries will be three 76mm and two 40mm AA guns, which, given this is Tier 1, they'd be pretty useless. Armor, not really worth discussing. It's DD level, ranging between 8 and 19 millimeters. Top speed, 18 knots. All told, this is a ship that looks quite promising, and I can see playing in a, sim in a similar way to many other Tier 1 ships, particularly a ship like the Hashidate or the Chang'an, by my view. So, I see it as a welcome start to the line, especially since it introduces a new country. So, with a possible Tier 1 ship out of the way, let's get to the ships that everyone wants to talk about here. The Destroyers. Starting off with Tier 2, the tech tree proposal that Talleyrand had as a Tier 2 candidate would be the Brazilian destroyer Maranhão. Originally built as the Royal Navy Acosta-class destroyer HMS Porpoise, which was launched in 1913, served in World War I, and even participated in the Battle of Jutland in 1916. She was sold to the Brazilian Navy in 1920, and was originally renamed the Alejandro de Lanca, before being renamed again to the Maranhão in 1927. She would serve in World War II in Brazil as an escort and patrol vessel and was decommissioned in 1946. To kick off a DD line, this ship could fit quite well here. Main armament were three single 102mm guns and she carried two twin 450mm torpedo tubes. 
Also, despite being a World War I vintage ship, she actually had some AA guns. Three 20mm Ehrlichens. Top speed, 29 knots. Overall, I see this ship working kind of well here, kind of a similar style to ships like the Takibana or the Longjiang at this tier, as something of a hybrid type of destroyer. Another possible tier to mention was one that Talleyrand saw as a good premium ship, and that would be the Argentine Navy's Katamarca class destroyer. These two German-built destroyers, named Katamarca and Jujui, and I'm probably butchering the latter, were launched in 1911 and served in the Argentine Navy until 1956. In terms of the design, these ships share a lot of similarities to ships like the G101 and the V25 that we have in the German DD line, and understandably so. Main armament were four single 102mm guns and four 533mm torpedo tubes. AA, though again useless at tier 2, unless you're in a fail division, were two 37mm Vickers 2 pounders. These ships are pretty big for their age too, so they likely have a pretty big hit pool as well, kind of similar to ships like the Japanese Umikaze. Top speed, 35 knots, so that's pretty quick. All told, I can see the Katamarka working as either a tier 2 or tier 3 if anything, either as a tech tree offering or as a premium. For Tier 3, the original proposal was for an interesting and somewhat familiar ship, namely the Peruvian destroyer Almirante Villar. This ship was originally the Imperial Russian Navy Novik class, no, that's the Novik class cruiser, I meant a Novik class destroyer, thank you, the Novik class destroyer Capitan Kingsbergen. And to put it lightly, this ship was kind of all over the place. She was taken by the Soviets during the Russian Revolution, then captured by the British, and then given to Estonia, who then sold it to Peru, where she saw service in conflicts against Colombia and Ecuador in the 1930s and early 40s. So this ship bears a lot of similarities to other Russian low-tier DDs, namely ships like the Dirsky or the Itzislav. Main armament were four 102mm guns, along with three triple 457mm torpedo tubes. Tubes. AA, weak as expected, with a single 37mm 2-pounder. Top speed, 34 knots. In terms of gameplay, I think the ship could fit quite well here, and I could see it playing in a way similar to ships like the Dirsky or the Wix, where the guns are a bit used a bit more so than torpedoes, though torpedo armament would be substantial in quantity, but likely the torpedo quality would be lackluster, perhaps Russian or US Navy level. Alternatively, Another ship that could work in a Tier 3 slot would be the Chilean Navy's Serrano-class destroyers. The Serrano-class was largely based on the Royal Navy's prototype destroyer HMS Amazon and were built as patrol ships to operate long distances along Chile's noticeably long coastline with the Pacific. Six ships were completed and they entered service in the late 20s, and the last ships of the class were decommissioned by 1968, though they were considered unsuited to their original task due to poor hull durability and were mostly used for mine laying and mine sweeping. In game though, these ships could possibly work here quite well. Main armament were three single 120mm guns along with two triple torpedo launchers, again 533mm. AA actually seems to exist on this one, with a single 76mm gun and three 20mm guns helping to maybe shoot down a plane or two against the CVs that you'll start seeing when you get put in tier 4 matches. Top speed, 35 knots. Honestly, upon looking at this, I can see the ship being a more hybrid-esque variant of a ship like the Vampire, and given its armament, it seems like it'd be very comfortable in a Tier 3 slot, though it could be argued it could possibly work at Tier 4 if balanced correctly. Speaking of Tier 4, there are actually three notable ones that I've been able to find. The first one may definitely come off as a surprise, especially regarding its nationality. In the original proposal, the ship listed for Tier 4 is a former Royal Navy H-Class destroyer known in its country as the Duerte, and I'm going to give you 5 seconds to figure out where this ship is from. You're wrong. I'm just going to say it now, you're probably wrong. This ship is from the Dominican Republic. Didn't see that coming, did you? Uh, unless you did, then great job, and you're likely from the Dominican Republic, so, uh, hola. 
This ship started out in life as the HMS Hotspur, which entered service in the Royal Navy in 1936. After serving in World War II, largely off of Norway and in the Mediterranean, she was sold to the Dominican Republic in 1948 and was originally renamed the Trujillo after the country's dictator at the time, Rafael Trujillo. After Trujillo was assassinated in 1961, she was renamed the Duerte after one of the founding fathers of the Dominican Republic, and she continued to serve until she was decommissioned and sold for scrap in 1972. Now, main armament on this one were three 120mm guns, and she had a quadruple mount of 533mm torpedo tubes. AA is actually not terrible for a low-tier DD, with four 40mm Bofors guns and eight 50 caliber machine guns. Top speed, 36 knots pretty quick. She definitely seems to be more of a gunboat design, though with performance to suit, this ship could be a very good gunboat or hybrid destroyer, especially if the DPM or the, and or the torp reload could bring it up to snuff. Aside from that, there are two other destroyers I've been able to find that could possibly fit a tier 4 quite well. Firstly, I found the Chilean Navy's Almirante Lynch class destroyers. Originally built in Britain for the Chilean Navy beginning in 1911, they were purchased by the Royal Navy when World War I came around, and they served in the Royal Navy as the Faulkner class. One of the six ships built was sunk during the Battle of Jutland, while the remaining five survived the war and returned to Chile where they served until 1945 when the final two were decommissioned. This ship, it must be said, is definitely a gunboat, but a pretty good gunboat to be sure. Main armament were six single 102mm guns, and she had two twin 533mm torpedo tubes. AA came around in a later upgrade, but it's still pretty lackluster, just two 40mm pom-poms. Top speed, 31 knots. Not great, but I wouldn't call that a deal breaker at tier 4 either. As I said, this ship is pretty much a gunboat, with torpedoes likely being used as weapons of convenience or last resort, but that gun power I think can make, a, make her a formidable weapon against other destroyers in particular. The last ship that I have here for Tier 4 is easily the most familiar of the Tier 4 candidates that I've found, that ship being the Peruvian Navy vessel Almirante Geis. Now, the reason she may look familiar is kind of evident to those who are familiar with low-tier Russian destroyers. Yeah, I'll just put it bluntly, it's an Itziaslav. This ship was the former Itziaslav class destroyer Avtoril, and after the ship was captured by the British after World War I and the Russian Revolution, she was transferred to Estonia before she was sold to Peru in 1933, where she continued to serve until 1954. If you're familiar with the Itziaslav, it's pretty much a copy-paste. Main armament were five 102mm guns, and she had three triple 457mm torpedo tubes. AA is your typical low-tier DD fare, with only two 20mm guns and three machine guns. Top speed, 35 knots, so that's pretty good. I personally hope it's something a bit more unique to go in this slot, like the Duarte or the Almirante Lynch, but this ship could probably work at Tier 4 as well if they want to go down that road. Moving on up, we come to Tier 5, and we have some options that could easily be said to be quite standardized between them, and you'll see why I say that when we come to them. The original proposal brings in a ship which adds yet another new country to the game, and that would be the Colombian Navy's Antioquia class destroyers. Originally built as the Lima class destroyers for the Portuguese Navy, and based on the design of the British prototype destroyer HMS Ambuscade, the two ships of the class, Antioquia and Caldas, were sold to Colombia in 1933 to counter some of the aforementioned destroyers going into service in the Peruvian Navy, where they served until 1961. In this case, we certainly have the makings of a solid hybrid destroyer here. Main armament were four single 120mm guns, and she carried two quadruple 533mm torpedo tubes. However, on a refit in the United States, the main guns were replaced by three US Navy 127mm guns. Though, in real life, this wasn't a welcome change since the center of gravity was shifted and they handled quite badly in poor weather. So, that could be a possible alternate hull, maybe a sea hull upgrade. AA is otherwise okay, but I wouldn't call it outstanding with three 40mm two pounders and two 20mm Ehrlichens. Top speed, pretty good, 36 knots. Overall, a very solid package that I can see playing a variety of roles on the team, from torpedoing to scouting to killing other DDs. Two other notable ones could also fit the slot well too. And funny enough, we have another ship from the country that I'm sure almost nobody expected to be mentioned here, the Dominican Republic, namely the Sanchez. 
Originally built as the Royal Navy F-Class destroyer HMS Fame and serving in World War II in Norway and on Atlantic convoys, she was sold to the Dominican Republic in 1949 and was renamed the Generalissimo, which was a title given to the aforementioned Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo. Once again, after Trujillo was assassinated, she was renamed the Sanchez and served until she was scrapped in 1968. Equipment-wise, the ship is borderline identical to the previously mentioned Antioquia. So that means four single 120mm guns and two quadruple torpedo tubes, but with only two dual 20 mils and two single 20 mil guns for AA, so I wouldn't call that too terribly great. Top speed, 36 knots again. A fairly similar design style can also be seen with another possible tier 5, the Cervantes class from Argentina. Originally built for the Spanish Navy as the Churuca class, the two ships, originally named Churuca and Alcala Gallano, were sold to the Argentine Navy while they were being built in 1926 and were renamed the Cervantes and the Juan de Garay, respectively. The main difference with this one is definitely more of a gun emphasis than the more hybrid-esque style that we see with the previous two. These ships had five 120mm guns and two triple torpedo launchers, again 533 mil. AA is pretty mediocre again with a single 76mm gun and four single 7.7mm machine guns. Top speed, once again, 36 knots. So depending on the playstyle that Wargaming wants to encourage with this line, I could see any one of these ships working quite well at tier 5, kind of playing in a similar role to ships like the Nicholas and particularly the Jamwe at this tier. At tier 6, I have three possible ones that look like a lot of fun. Firstly, we have the Brazilian Navy's Acra class destroyers. Alternatively referred to as the Amazonas class, they were described by Talleyrand in his original post on the matter as, and I quote, the bastard son of the Gallant and the Sims. This class of six destroyers was built in the early 40s to counter the Argentine Navy's new Buenos Aires class destroyers, which is another good tier 6 candidate in my view. What's cool here is that these ships were actually built in Brazil rather than being contracted out to British or US shipyards. Design-wise, they were largely based on the Royal Navy's G-class destroyers, but carried US Navy weaponry on board, so it's definitely a unique design that I'd like to see feature, either here or as it could possibly be argued at tier 7. Main armament were four single mounts of the U.S. Navy's famous 127mm guns and two quadruple 533mm torpedo tubes. AA seems okay with a single 40mm Bullforce gun and four single 20mm Ehrlichens. Top speed, 35.5 knots. Being described as the bastard son of the Gallant and the Sims, we have yet another solid hybrid destroyer which again could work well either here or at tier 7 depending on how it's balanced. And what of that rival that I mentioned before? Well, that would be the Buenos Aires class from Argentina. This was a class of seven destroyers built in Britain for the Argentine Navy and commissioned in 1938. Largely based once again on the Royal Navy's G class, it's easy to see that they're quite similar to the HMS Gallant that we already have in game as a tier 6 premium. Main armament were four single 120mm guns, as well as four dual torpedo launchers. AA as built were eight single 12.7mm machine guns, though they were also outfitted with two single 40mm Bowforce guns later on. Top speed, 36 knots. For those familiar with the Gallant and how it's played, I think you might be right at home with this ship, as it shares a lot of similarities and needless to say would work quite well at tier 6. Along similar lines, we also have the Argentine Navy's Mendoza class, which were largely based on the Royal Navy's Scott class destroyer leader. This one is definitely more of a gunboat than the Buenos Aires, so this one could be an option if they want to go down a more gun-derived line. Main armament were five 120mm guns and two triple torpedo launchers. AA, a single 76mm gun and two single 40mm Bofors. Top speed, 36 knots. So again, fairly similar, but with some differences between them that could work depending on what the line want is going to be like, all of which I think could work at tier 6 quite well. Tier 7, though, is where things start to get very interesting, and it leads me to my first bona fide disagreement on this list. On Talleyrand's original proposal, he has a ship that, while it's very interesting and brings another new country to the game, would be extremely overpowered at Tier 7, given the info I have on hand. The ship I'm talking about is the Venezuelan Navy's Nueva Espata class destroyers. 
Built in Britain in the 1950s, these three ships served in the Venezuelan Navy from the mid-50s to the late 70s. The main reason why this ship would definitely be OP at Tier 7 is kind of obvious when you look at the ship it's based on, and in particular, the guns it mounts. Main armament were three dual turrets of 114mm guns. And for those who notice and are following the new ships arriving in game soon as of making this video, you know why that's a problem. These are the same guns found on the Jutland and the Daring, the upcoming tier 9 and 10 British destroyers. Yeah. And adding to it, the designs of these ships are based on the Royal Navy's battle class destroyers, which is what the Jutland is. This is why I firmly see the ship as either a tier 8 or tier 9 if you really want to push things and give it an insane reload like the Daring. The main reason I rate it as an 8 or 9 as opposed to a 9 or 10 is the torpedoes, or lack thereof. She only mounts a single triple torpedo launcher, but that doesn't seem to be the ship's flavor here. She's definitely a gunboat, if anything equal in style to ships like the Kid or the Vampire where the torpedoes are something of an afterthought. Moving on with the ship, AA is pretty good, with 640mm Bofors guns and the main guns acting as dual purpose weapons. Top speed, 34 knots. So all that being said, that doesn't really answer the question of what ships could possibly work at tier 7 here. Fortunately, there are a couple that could likely work. Alongside the aforementioned Acra class, which I believe could be balanced for tier 7 pretty easily, another Brazilian ship that could fit the role was the Marcillo Diaz class destroyers. Largely based on the US Navy's Mayhan class destroyers, these three ships were the first modern warships built in Brazil. And I had to say, if the Acra is the bastard son of the Gallant and the Sims, this is definitely the bastard son of the Mayhan and the Sims. So it seems the Sims gets around quite a bit, huh? Hey, 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 hey. Anyway, shitty jokes aside, main armament are five single US Navy 120mm guns, and she had two quadruple torpedo tubes. AA, alongside dual purpose main guns, she also has four 20mm and four 40mm Bofors guns. Top speed, 36.5 knots, so that's pretty quick. Overall, I can see both these ships fitting a tier 7 slot quite well, once again, depending on how they're balanced. So now we come to the point where a lot of you may be saying, oh boy, here we go again. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you would be expecting to see for the top of these branches, Pan-Asian Destroyers 2.0, which is to say US Navy DDs 3.0. So let me guess, you're expecting the Benson again, the Fletcher again, and the Gearing again. But I am happy to report that's not really the case here. For one thing, there's no former Benson or Gleaves class destroyers here. None. At all. None of them went to Latin American navies, so that bucks the trend immediately. In the original proposal, Talleyrand placed here a very interesting ship that I can see as an attempt to create, well, as I describe it, a mix of the Benson and the Akizaki. And that would be the British-built Almirante class from Chile. Two of the class were built, Almirante Riveros and Almirante Williams in the mid to late 50s, and they both served well into the 1990s with upgrades. The main armament is very unique and definitely leads to a rapid fire gunboat style of gameplay. Main armament are four single 102mm guns, and how modern the guns were, the reload is ridiculous. In fact, reading what I heard about this ship, she was able to put out around 50 rounds a minute in real life. So, uh, yikes, they might need to nerf that one a wee bit. Torpedoes would be a single quintuple 533mm launcher. AA is quite good with the main battery acting as dual purpose, backed up by 640mm Bofors guns. Top speed, 34.5 knots, a very unique and intriguing design that I see as a solid tier 8 if balanced correctly. I also did previously mention the Nueva Esparta class from Venezuela, which I believe could work well as a tier 8 or 9 depending on its overall performance. But also a ship that could be debated to fit either at an 8 or 9 slot were the many different Fletcher class destroyers that served in Latin American navies after World War II. In fact, the Fletcher class was what Talleyrand had as his tier 9 candidate in his list. 
In particular, he mentions the Cuitlahawk class from Mexico, adding yet another interesting country to the game. Other than Mexico, Fletcher-class ships were spread far and wide throughout the navies of Latin America, including the Almirante Brown class in Argentina, the Parra class in Brazil, the Blanco Encalada class in Chile, the Antioquia class, no not that one, in Colombia, and the VR class, no not that one either, in Peru. What's interesting though, and the main reason why I consider them as either an 8 or 9 slot rather than just saying that they're 9s, is because of the torpedoes. All of these variants of the Fletcher that I've found are basically similar to, uh, to the arrangement of the USS Kid, which we have in game as a tier 8 premium, even though it's a Fletcher class. In all cases, one of the torpedo launchers was removed for extra AA, and I think a lot of us are familiar with how strong the Kid is as a tier 8 DD. And that's why I'm largely leaving it up for debate as to where these Fletcher class variants could go, either as an 8 or 9 slot. So feel free to discuss that for sure, because I'm definitely doing a lot of that in my own mind right now, just thinking about it again. Sheesh. And finally, we come to Tier 10. And definitely the tier where a lot of people would be expecting to see another gearing in this position. And while it is certainly possible, it's thankfully not the only way they could go here. For one thing, we have the Peruvian Navy's Palacios class, which were former Royal Navy Daring class destroyers, the upcoming British Tier 10 DD. But aside from the Palacios, there is a very interesting class of ship that Talleyrand had as his Tier 10 candidate, and personally, I'd like to see it implemented in game, albeit with one change that I think would definitely need to happen, but I'll discuss that when we get to it. This ship was the Colombian Navy's Vinte de Julio class. Built in Sweden in the mid to late 50s, these two ships, Vente de Julio and Siete de Augusto, were modified versions of the Swedish Navy's Halland class destroyers custom built for Colombian service, and they served in the Colombian Navy from 1958 to the mid 80s. First impressions are pretty promising, it must be said. Main armament are three dual turrets of 120 mil guns with a damn fast reload that could give the daring a run for its money. Following the trend of a lot of other DDs we've discussed here, this is definitely a gunboat with torpedoes only being a single quadruple mount of 533 mil torps. AA is quite strong here with the main guns acting as dual purpose along with four 40 mil bow force guns and even some rocket launchers which given the fact that rocket launcher AA is a thing on the hood that we have in game I think they'd probably be able to put those in too. So all this sounds great sounds like we have a solid tier 10 gunboat here but now we come to the kicker with this one the speed. Now, I may end up provoking the wrath of a certain ship girl if I say this, but I don't think there's any real way of sugarcoating it. The top speed is 32 knots. Oh, sorry! Oh, sorry indeed, Shimakaze. This thing is slow. 32 knots would not only make it the slowest tier 10 destroyer by a country mile, but one of the slowest DDs outside of lower tiers in the whole game. Hey, this thing, and I'm not even kidding, is actually slower than the Akizuki. <laughs> There's not only going to be cruisers, but even some battleships that will be outrunning you at that pace. However, there is a possible saving grace here. 32 knots was the speed that these Colombian versions of the Halland class could make, but the original Swedish Navy Halland class ships, of which this ship is essentially a subclass of, could actually move at a, at a very respectable speed of 37 knots. It's definitely not a Shimakaze or any of the Russian DDs, but it's a heck of a lot better than 32. So I see them either putting the 37 knot speed in, or somewhere in the middle, since I don't see a lot of DD players being too happy with a ship like this that only goes 32 knots, no matter how powerful it may be. This ship does seem very powerful though, and it could be a formidable anti-DD weapon, and a solid scout and a good ship for generally annoying enemies to death with their guns. Aside from the Vinti de Julio and the Palacios, there's a wealth of other ships to choose from if you're content with seeing another Gearing or Sumner class in the Tier 10 slot. If we look at the two classes, starting in this case with the Allen M. Sumner class, the Gearing's predecessor, which we know in game as the Yu Yang, the Pan-Asian Tier 10, we have examples in the form of the Segui class from Argentina, the Mato Grosso class from Brazil, the Ministro Zenteno class from Chile, the Caldas class from Colombia, 
Colombia and the Falcon class from Venezuela. And looking at the gearing class, we have examples that can be used in the form of the Pi class from Argentina, the Marcillo Diaz class, no not that one, from Brazil, the Quetzalcoatl class from Mexico, and the Presidente Aloy Alfaro class from Ecuador. If they do choose to go down this route, which for the sake of gameplay diversity, I hope they don't, which ship they pick would largely be based on what the ships were equipped with while they were in service in those countries. If they were some of the later versions of the Gearings or Sumners with missile systems, then it's not going to happen. But there are definitely some like the Pai, the Ministro Zenteno, and the Mato Grosso that could definitely fit that bill pretty well. And with that, I'm finally going to wrap things up with Pan American DDs. There's likely a lot more that can be said in this regard, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want me to drag on too much longer since I'm pretty sure this video is long enough already. However, building off this topic, I have plans in the works for a revisit on my original video on the Pan American topic in game to cover over some very cool things that I was introduced to after the fact. Once again, a very big thank you to Talleyrand, Bruno Scherzer, and Mo Bryan and for their help and their inspiration for making this video and this series. It's been really cool so far delving into this, frankly, under-discussed topic in the annals of naval history, and it's definitely something that will continue for me at least a little bit longer. Other than the Pan Americans, I've been doing some research on topics such as Russian battleships, British aircraft carriers, and the recently leaked Pan-European branch, which I'm really stoked for coming off of a video where I mentioned some ships that could work and possibly are coming to that branch. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to discuss this topic in the comments below, and I'll try to reply to them for sure. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Keep on sailing, my friends.